I just remember it was so captivating, really kind of alien-like. This strange-looking material is not computer-generated. What you're seeing is a liquid with nano-sized particles of iron in it reacting to a magnetic field. It's called ferrofluid. It was first developed by NASA, and artist Eric Mesplay has been using it in his work for the past 12 years. Every single sculpture I feel like I tackle with ferrofluid. I have no idea how I'm gonna get this to work when I go in. Eric is a master metal worker and builder. He built this giant clock and a literal metal jacket. My father, when I was 11 years old, he got me an anvil and I started blacksmithing. When I was younger, I would make all sorts of stuff from gates, ornamental spoons and swords. But ever since coming across ferrofluids in a scientific article as a graduate student, he's been captivated by it. And the more I read about it and the characteristics of it, I just, the whole time was thinking, oh, I really want to do something with this stuff. And when you were a kid, you could see the magnetic field in a 2D iron filings on a piece of paper. You could see the striations of it. But now you're actually seeing, with all these nodes coming off of it, what the magnetic field looks like in a three-dimensional realm. NASA developed ferrofluids in the early 1960s. Engineer Steve Papel was trying to figure out how to draw rocket fuel into the engine in zero gravity. His solution? He would magnetize it. Now, the magnetic fuel was never actually adopted for spaceflight, but ferrofluids are used in a number of different commercial applications. From cooling loudspeakers, dampening vibrations on helicopters, and even to create an airtight seal around your computer's hard drive. It's been used for many different things, but what I use it for is none of those things. I use it to show off how beautiful it looks. What you're seeing is Eric increasing the power to the electromagnet until eventually the fluid jumps. And it forms into those little cones uh, because that's the magnetic field, but also, you know, that's least resistance too when something gets skinnier and skinnier and then it, you know, goes right up towards the magnet itself. The very first time I got ferrofluid, I had it shipped from a company called Ferrotech and they're the ones that make ferrofluid. I noticed instantly that it was totally, totally messy. I mean, it's like black ink. So, you know, I had ink all over myself, but I would purchase natural magnets and, and, you know, move it around and just stare at it and go like, wow, this is crazy. But even the characteristics of me playing with it with the magnet, it was different than what I thought. It, it wasn't quite moving how I wanted it to move or I envisioned it moving, uh, but it was nonetheless still intriguing and beautiful to me. I decided to do my first project, which was the machine affecting effect. I made a very large sphere. There was a huge natural magnet inside this sphere. Teaching himself how to code, Eric programmed the movement of the magnet so it would seemingly become attracted to a viewer who approached the sphere. I think there's something really important about connecting people with a piece of work, not only just visually, but what you're doing is affecting it. For his next project, Eric built a wall of ferrofluid that would mirror the shape of the viewer standing in front of it. I was originally thinking of, uh, uh, you know, that pin toy where you would like push your hand in and all the pins would come out and make a shape of your hand. I really wanted to do a version of that that was with just this fluid. And as you would walk in front, it would make a very, you know, 8-bit kind of representation of you in real time. I made 320 electromagnets and I placed it behind this wall and I had a pump that would recirculate the fluid up to the top and run over the surface of it. I had to build all of the computer chips, computer components, uh, write the program. Uh, I built every single magnet, you know, every single problem I ran into, I, I kind of had to figure out how to solve it. Eric quickly ran into issues with the pumps that circulated the ferrofluid these cheap pumps that you buy have a, have a magnet and they kind of spin around and that's what turns it. All this fluid, it's just dragging around on the pump system. So it, it was adding tons of resistance and every half hour, two hours, you know, I was blowing them out. I finally decided I'm just gonna tip the whole thing over and make it into a pool. And so that was my third piece. That one's called Fair Flexion Pool. I was in a class and it was an interactive musical class. 
and there was a professor there who uh, specialized in what's called Max MSP, and it's a way of programming for a lot of stuff in the music industry and, and lighting and things timed. An image is captured from an old Xbox. The computer program tells this uh, microcontroller right here in the center, and then this microcontroller tells these driver boards which magnets to turn on or off. And it just makes a real pixelated, simple representation of, of what it's picking up through the camera. The whole time in the class, everyone else is working on their music projects. I am trying to build a program for the, the sculpture I want. Tons of wires, tons of connections, tons of problems left and right, and eventually it, it got working. As Eric built on his experience with ferrofluids, he had to learn more and more about magnetism and how to build his own electromagnets. In science class, your professor would take a nail and then you'd wrap the nail with copper wire and then you'd connect it to a battery and then you could pick up, you know, little paper clips or whatever. That's what I was going for. Using the same concept, Eric built larger and more powerful electromagnets to make the fluid jump further. Well, when I first turned it on, we weren't sure if it was working, so I, I kind of waved a, a crescent wrench over it and, and it immediately just sucked it out of my hand and stuck right to the magnet. As he built stronger magnets, he faced new challenges. Heat is a huge factor with magnets, so if a magnet gets too hot, it gets saturated, and meaning the magnetic field isn't really that optimal for how much current you're really putting into it. Eric developed a coolant system for these larger, more powerful magnets. So this is the next electromagnet. This is the bottom part of the coolant system. So this place is in here, and another version of this coolant system goes down here on the steel. So it's being cooled from both sides as well as through the center. In his 2016 piece, Killing Time, Eric says he built his strongest electromagnet yet. I'm guessing that that magnet attached properly could probably pick up like a, a thousand pounds, maybe a small car. <laughs> and my father, you know, he was uh, very much of a, a builder as well as being an artist. So I was helping out my father, like physically build stuff when I was a very young kid. He introduced me to the foundries. Loveland, Colorado have uh, some of the biggest founders in the nation, surprisingly. It started with mold making and wax chasing, and then I moved up to pouring molten metal and to welding, and then eventually lead welder. Most of the other lead welders were, you know, in their young 40s. I just enjoyed creating. I thought it was really awesome to just build things with my hand and watch something unfold and be complete. My dad's done tons of huge drawings. I still remember one drawing he had done. This thing was massive. It was, you know, like nine feet by 14 feet. And just the way he would draw, I was really blown away with. He'd do like a section over here, and then he'd do a section over here, and then a section over here, and then the whole thing would like completely come together, absolutely perfect, and he didn't really outline the, the piece as a whole. It just, it, the whole thing would just fit together all of a sudden. I was around this all the time. I was around, you know, this sense of wonderment and awe because my dad was doing things that no one else was doing. I think overall the goal has been to, you know, create a sense of art that kind of re-stimulates people about art. A lot of sculptures I try to make, I try to show like the what ifs, or how is this possible to even do something like this? Those are the fun questions for me to try to showcase in, in this type of work, of the unforeseen thing. It's, what most people don't realize is I have failed so many times trying to figure this stuff out. But as time goes on, I figure more and more and more out. And I don't know if a lot of people stick with something that is that frustrating for a long time. That's, that's how it goes. My current project, I'm using light and, and, and trying to bend the light with the magnet. What's happening is, is as the magnet is spinning, the microscopic particles of the iron, they're actually moving in the plane of glass. So when you see the light look like it's moving, it's actually the way the iron particles are moving and the light is refracting off of them. Adding the light 
on this new system is a, is a whole new starting point of frustration for me. Frustrations are just part of working with this mesmerizing material. It's so hard to even master anything in, in life. With this fluid, I feel like it's, this is just the beginning. And now I've been into it for 10 to 12 years now. <laughs> so there's a lot left. Thank you.